I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Creek Devil. We have Doug joining us today. Doug, how are you, my friend? Oh, not bad. Uh, doing all right. Very good. Tom, you've spoken with Doug, so I'm going to have you take the lead on this. Yeah, you bet. Hey, Doug. Um, so you have uh, you've had an encounter, and uh, I believe it was also in Ohio. So we're starting to. Uh, I wouldn't say starting. I just want to tell everybody out there, Ohio and Pennsylvania, especially Western Pennsylvania, are Bigfoot hotspots. So I'm going to hand it off to you and uh, fill us in on uh, what your encounter was. Well. Uh... That's the one. That's one reason I contacted you. Where mine happened in the summer of '84. Uh, some friends and I were had, took a little uh, last-minute camping trip. And it's not really a camping trip. Uh, the area everybody knows, eastern and southeastern Ohio, the hill country. Uh, where I where I was at was the two biggest farming in the western uh, part of the state, right along the Indiana state line. Uh, this happened in basically the middle of a cornfield at around midnight. Uh, we had uh, decided to go camping in a little wood lot. And uh, I cannot tell you for the life of me why, but we decided to take off. There were four of us and uh, walk to the one guy's house. It was, I don't know, it was a mile and a half, two miles away. Nothing unusual. Uh, we did this kind of stuff all the time. This was our backyard. Uh, and you got to understand this area, uh, on a 660 square acres is a, a square mile. Uh, the average around here on a square mile is uh, probably 640 of that is planted. So uh, there's no real cover. Small ditches. Uh, creek banks, most of those are uh, on uh, the riparian. There is no riparian zone. The farmers plow right up to the edge of it. It's just weeds. Okay. And uh, <laughs> it, Doug, it, real quick, I want to ask, what what are the crops yeah. that are out there? Uh, it's corn and beans, wheat, uh, just your standard. Uh, okay. At that time, there was still a lot of family farms. It's pretty much went now, uh, at that time, almost everyone, all of the farms out in the country had, you know, either hogs or chickens or cattle of some sort. Uh, now it's, it's, the kids didn't want to be farmers. And, uh, so all, the uh, all the farms have sold off and it's big, almost all back, basically factory farms anymore. Uh, People have thousands of acres, and uh, the small farm has pretty much went away. The populations went up because all those little wood lots that we had, that four or five acres, people have built houses in now. But uh, anyway, we had uh, took off walking, and we did this a lot. No lights, didn't need them. Like I said, this was basically our backyard, and. Uh, we all of a sudden we come into the edge of a cornfield right along the edge of the a ditch. Uh, we were making pretty much no noise, you know, where it's been uh, worked on the farm there. It's been sprayed. It's just dirt. And uh, all of a sudden everything exploded and we can't see, but there's this huge screen. And uh, I've only found one on the internet that even comes real close. Uh, we were within a few yards when it exploded and screamed. And I can't tell you if it jumped that 30 foot ditch or if it was in the edge and, and jumped out. Uh, like I said, this has been a long time ago, but, uh, when it jumped out, uh, I mean, it hit the cornfield on the other side. 
Okay. And commenced what, a tear do apart. Think, what do you think may have caused it to jump and explode? Did you guys like come in proximity or, or was there a trigger yeah, of some sort? When it, yeah, when this happened, uh, when it screamed the first time and, and everything went crazy, we were within a few yards of it. And we were right in its lap. It didn't know we were there. Uh, don't have, they say you can't sneak up on them. Well, uh, we were in the last place a human being should ever have been. Uh, and in my opinion, it the last place anyone would expect uh, one of these things to be. And I can't say that it was a Bigfoot Sasquatch. What I can tell you is it was nothing that existed in Dark County, Ohio at that time or even now. Uh, it commenced to tear in the cornfield apart. Uh, pacing back and forth to make about a 20 yard pace, just thrashing that corn. And if anybody that's been in a stand in cornfield in the early August, it's full mature uh, and it will, it'll tear you up. The leaves will cut you and the stalks, you just don't want to beat around in. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a good thing, <laughs> but, uh, and every, every, I don't know, 30 seconds, every minute it would stop. And then there would be this thud. It, it's hard to describe. You can almost feel it as much as you can hear it. People say it's a stomp or a beat on the ground. Uh, at that time, never, I didn't know anything about any of this. Uh, I had, like everyone else, I don't think I'd even seen the Patterson film yet. Uh, but I did get a book out of the library once uh, that talked about the abominable snowman and Loch Ness and all of that. But uh, what were you guys thinking when this was going on? What's what's going through your head? Well, it was probably the closest to a Code Brown moment that any of us had ever been in. Like I say, it was pitch black. It was new moon. There was you couldn't see the guy standing in front of you. Uh, but this went on for a few minutes. We kept we cleared the cornfield into a wheat stubble field and put a little distance. Uh, and it was still wasn't 40 yards away from us and, uh, couldn't see anything, no lights, no weapons. And that was unusual at that time. He, uh, catching us without a, a firearm was <laughs> a real unusual thing, but, uh, this went on for several minutes. And, uh, finally, my, the buddy that we were going to his house. He, uh, he was trying to convince us all that it was a deer. Well, it was not a deer. It wasn't even close to a deer. And finally, the last scream uh, ended in this guttural, god-awful growl. And uh, I looked at my buddy. I really couldn't see him, but kind of his silhouette and said, look, deer don't blankety blank and growl. And uh, we commenced, we were about 250 yards from the nearest house. And uh, we, uh, we ran and it never made another sound. Uh, it stopped screaming, didn't hear anything in the corn once we got where we were going and, and never heard anything anywhere else. Like there was something when it screamed, nothing answered it. Never heard any noise from any other directions. Uh, you know, a, we, um, one of the, th yeah, well, I, I, you know, just a thought running through my head is that these creatures are very temperamental and if you had disturbed it, cause you know, honestly, you're probably the second or third report we've heard recently of these creatures in cornfields. And there was a report of one of our guys a couple of years ago talking about one in um, it would have been in western Nevada or eastern California right there in the Sierras where they had a cornfield and one mm -hmm. of these things had sat down and cleared out about a 40 foot circle swath and it sat down and it must have eaten 
dozens upon dozens of ears of corn. You know, I could just clear a little, make a little clearing, sit down and have some privacy and, you know, just eat away. And I'm wondering if that was a similar situation, if you guys stumbled on this. And you answered my other question, which was, what else could it be? I don't, I, I'm a solid thousand percent in your camp. This is not well, a white-tailed that, deer, <laughs> right? That was the biggest animal in Ohio was white-tailed deer at that time. They didn't even acknowledge the few bears that would sneak in to, out of Pennsylvania every year. And the DNR always knew where they were, uh, the Department yeah. of Natural Resources. Right. Uh, and we're clear on the other side of the state, 250 miles away. Um, the biggest animal we had was white-tailed deer. And at that time, uh, there weren't many of those in this part of the state. Uh, like I said, this was in 1984. Um, at that time, they estimated we had like maybe one per square mile in this county. Uh, it's better now, but... Uh, the other, the other side of the state, <laughs> you get into the deer when you get into the trees. The corn and, and the crops are great, but they still have to have a place to live. Uh, one thing I've always hated about living here is it's either corn and beans or it's mud. There's, there, there's no happy medium. Uh, okay. there's not, not much, like I said, on the average square mile, there's only a few acres that aren't tilled. Uh, it's just farm country. Yeah, right. right. And, uh, well, I've got I've got family in the Midwest. I, I have a real good idea of what what it's like. Um, so this thing was screaming, and then at the, the very last time it screamed, and it went down into a low guttural it, growl. It, yeah, uh, it just rattled. It, it, that one that growl that everyone talks about that you can feel it in your chest. Uh, it, it was something else. I've never heard anything like it. Uh, I've spent my life either in a truck or out in the woods, and uh, I've never heard any noise like even the scream. Uh, I, like I said, I finally heard one on the Internet here recently that uh, if it was recorded at the distance at that close, it probably was about the same. But um, these... Uh, I don't know. I've really just started getting getting into this researching a little bit in the last few years. Uh, my life was too busy doing other things. Uh, that I always like to think that that didn't have an effect on me, but uh, you know, I still hunted and trapped as much as possible. But I look back and think that uh, I never went in the woods after dark. I was out of the woods before it got dark and I didn't go in until I could walk without a flashlight. Uh, very little. I pretty much had quit coon hunting by then. Um, it, I hate to admit it did affect me. I don't think I've talked to anybody and I don't know if Will has either that has had an encounter with the creatures where, where they're not affected. You know, I've, uh, buddy of mine the other day we were talking and uh, he's uh, I mean he goes out elk hunting every year yeah, last one he shot last year was in the uh, presence of these they were sort of in the area the creatures and he right. shot the elk and it was late at night and he had to basically just bed down and sleep he said it would have been disrespectful to the elk to have just given it up to the creatures and left the area, he said, but I talked to him the other day, and he said, I never will sleep in a tent ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, what do they say, uh, sack lunch? Uh, yep. Yeah, well, <laughs> well I, and I told him, I, I told uh, our, his buddy, I said, you know, they actually like nylon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but, but yeah, no, I understand. Um, it, it does have a, 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 a lot, you know, a lifelong lasting effect. Uh, oh, yeah. So 
let's. Mm-hmm. I want to go back. Yeah. I, I want to ask a little bit about. You said you heard a thump. Okay. Was it one thump or multiple thumps? Uh, multiple. Uh, every time it would stop thrashing the, in yeah. the corn, it would. Sometimes it would stomp two or three times. I'm saying stomp. I'm assuming that's what happened. What was going right. on? Yeah. Uh, uh, sometimes it'd be just once, and it would scream, and then go back to thrashing. Uh, I regret to this day not going back the next morning. Uh, but two of us, we ended up finishing the walk out to my buddy's house, and uh, we crashed there. And two of us had to work the next day, so we, uh, the other two were city kids in all reality, and uh, mm-hmm. so they weren't they weren't going to go out. But uh, I regret not going back in there and seeing what we could see, you know, because uh, I have a feeling it was a mess. Yeah, uh, that was that was another question I had was what did it look like? But uh, yeah, I think the creatures are. I don't know, Will, if you could jump in. You think it? I mean, it almost sounds like this thing was, you know, the very temperamental and possibly had a for lack of a better word a tantrum that they had interrupted it yeah that's very likely sure well there's a see back in back then we still had like i said the family farms and uh this thing was only a couple hundred yards from two farms that one was a dairy farm which there's always feed of some sort and back then uh all the farmers had what we called a dump pit and if they had an animal die, uh, their their family trash and everything went in this, they'd dig a big hole, and once or twice a year, they'd burn it. Uh, you know, it wasn't the biggest thing on EPA out here. Uh, and dead animals, the same thing. If a calf died, they took it and put it out. And this family, they were brothers. Their pit was only about 100, no, not even 100 yards in a little patch of trees from where we were at and uh, within a couple of miles of there I could there were a half a dozen of those where the farmers would throw their dead animals uh, every chicken house the poultry is a big thing around here and at that time there were still free range turkey farms they would have a 40 acre field with a thousand turkeys running around in it uh, so there was plenty of food. This is pre-coyote in the state of Ohio. Uh, they were just starting to show up about that time. And that ended the uh, free-range poultry. Uh, but there was, there's never, there was at that time never a shortage of food at that time of year. Everyone had big gardens. Uh, and one thing I've, I've always thought, uh, you could start at the Ohio River at that time of year, the end of July, 1st August, and you could go to the Mississippi River and never be seen. Uh, there's corn predominantly the whole way. Uh, you could sneak around the waterways and uh, everything else, but you could travel all that way and never be seen. Uh, if they, uh, I have a background in wildlife biology and management. Uh, went to college for it, ended up, didn't get my degree, life got in the way. But uh, every animal on the planet does what they call dispersal. That's when the uh, juvenile males, sub-adult males, uh, usually in the summer, early fall, leave the family unit and go out looking for a mate, up to including humans. Uh, they used to be that way. Now they use the internet, but uh, uh, that is something that I've always wondered if maybe that was a situation. He was by himself, a young male traveling with all the extra cover and food that he needed to uh, find another group or a female or who knows. Let me uh, ask a question. A couple things that interest me about this is number one, the uh, the pits that you're talking about, uh, where mm-hmm. they throw dead animals, seems like a real opportune 
area to, you know, for a food source. Absolutely. And, yeah, and, and I don't think they're bothered at all by eating, you know, decomposing rotten flesh. I mean, that's, that's, they seem to be adapted to that. Um, the other question I have is, what about, have you talked to other people? Has anybody else in the area had encounters or is there any discussion of this? Uh, well, uh, the discussion, there's really not a discussion much around here. But uh, um, to kind of continue, the next year, roughly about the same time, the fellow's house we went to and crashed out uh, that evening, his parents and sister were out of town for the weekend, but he had to work, so he stayed home. And uh, I think it was a Friday night. I get a call. This is about the same time frame. I get a call from him telling me to show up at stop down the road at an abandoned barn and uh, come in and come armed. He had somebody, he was laying, they had a big picture window in his uh, living room and uh, he was laying watching TV and a, a large human shape went by the window. Uh, this is nine, 10 o'clock at night. Uh, and like I said, in the area of the first of August, and uh, I did. I met him and uh, got there and hooked up. And you could hear something out in the corn around his house. And like a lot of houses, it was surrounded by corn. And uh, we, it wouldn't answer when we got hollered. We uh, let it know that we were going to shoot. We were going to start shooting if somebody didn't answer and come out. And you could hear it moving around now 50, 60 yards away. Couldn't see anything. Uh, so we finally did, but all we did was just shoot into the ground. And uh, then it was, leave. you could hear it running through the cornfield, uh, basically back in the direction that we had been the year before. Uh, there again, can't say exactly what it was. Can tell you what it wasn't. It wasn't a person and it wasn't a deer or a, a dog. Uh, so, yes, there are other things. Right now, I know of two uh, ongoing situations where they're coming up to the house, taking uh, chickens, and uh, just bothering the, the ladies of the house mainly, uh, just 20 miles or so from here in Miami County, which would be, if you know the area, uh, north of Dayton, north of I-70, about 35, 40 mile. Um, can you, uh, what, what, can you elaborate a little bit on the details in those other, uh, situations? Well, the one, uh, lady's a four horse farmer. Uh, she breeds horses and trains horses. And, uh, she had been noticing some issues with the animals and, uh, hearing some strange noises, I guess. And uh, one day, one of her horses was out in the pasture against the barn and was just not acting right, really acting up. So she walked out, out of the barn, out to the pasture, and uh, got to the horse. He come to her, and uh, she was going to put him away. And apparently an eight-foot-plus brown, hairy, man-type creature stepped out of the edge of the, apparently they had, they have a little wood lot uh, adjacent to the pasture, stepped over the fence out of the pasture, into the pasture, and moved toward her while her and the horse headed for the barn in the house. And uh, she's heard a lot of, a lot of things since and had uh, apparently had slapping on the buildings. Um, I haven't heard any more. This has been a week or two ago. Uh, the other, they've lost some chickens, and uh, the lady of the house has seen it. She went out to check, uh, let the dogs out. Apparently, they both smoke, but they don't smoke in the house. And uh, they let the dogs out when they go out for a cigarette in the evening. And uh, 
the dog went out and a little bit like Will's dog did. It went out running around like it normally does and all of a sudden came back uh, tail between its legs. So she got a flashlight and went out to check around the chicken coop. And uh, again, another seven to eight foot. Uh, again, she said it was brown. Was standing in amongst a few trees along the edge of the cornfield. And I guess some of her neighbors have had issues. Uh, you know, people around here, over where you folks are, this is a, a common subject. Uh, you know, Bigfoot's on every corner. That's not something in this area that even <laughs> comes up uh, as a subject. A uh, little bit over in the eastern part of the state, but uh, even over there, um, the folks don't talk about it. Everybody knows, but they don't talk about it. Yeah. What uh, what time of day was it on the first one? And you said that was like a week or two ago. Uh, yeah. This, okay. Was that in the daytime or in the evening? From what I understood. Okay. And the, the other second was, uh, one. The second one was at night. Um, I think she said it was in the area at 30, 10 o'clock-ish. Uh, okay. There's a state, state trooper that lives north of Columbus uh, that had his dog ripped in half and uh, a shed with his deep freeze ripped open and the, the freezer raided. And that's an animal that, that jumps over a six foot chain link fence. Uh, He's seen when it. did uh, when did that happen with the dog being torn in half? That was uh, earlier this summer. Um, what was it in June? I think. Does he have? Does he know any of the details that the dog? You know, did it like chase after it? What? We had a guy the we dog? talked to about a year ago who had a situation like that. Yeah, the dog. Uh, lived inside the chain link fence that surrounds the pro his property uh, and ran free. It had, they also had a uh, one of those invisible fence things. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it was a it was a pretty good sized dog. It was part uh, part shepherd and part pit, if I remember right. Uh, a good dog, but one of those that you'd look at and probably would be a little leery of. But I guess it was a great dog. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but uh, do you now? Do you know where, this guy? What you, no, uh, I just happened to uh, talk to a fella that uh, was friends with him, and uh, you know he can't. He's a, a state trooper. He can't come out and talk about this stuff. Uh, yeah, it's a situation he's got to deal with quietly. Uh, so a couple of us have come up with ideas to try and, you know, between the lights and some other things, uh, to get them to, uh, leave them alone. And there again, I think it seems that all, uh, a lot of them have to do with women. I know that sounds odd, but you hear it all the time. Uh, the men are gone for a length of time. Uh, like him, he works a lot of hours, odd hours. He works at night sometimes and daytime sometimes. Uh, the woman with the horse, I can't remember if, uh, I actually think she was single. And the other lady, her husband works in Cincinnati. So he spends a lot of time on the road. Uh, that's a good hour and a half drive from where they're at for him to go to work. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's not something uncommon. I think about. Right. It's, um, yeah, we do hear, uh, uh, quite a bit. I, I would say we get a lot of reports where it seems that they, uh, and I don't know if it has to do with the fact that they feel less intimidated uh, and therefore, they're more emboldened around women. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just don't have a theory on that, or at least a solid one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've got a lot more. See, uh, 
I got real sick in 06 and got crippled up and uh, couldn't drive anymore. So I moved to southeastern Ohio where I down towards where I went to school. I actually lived in the county. I know you guys get a kick of the, the old mountain monsters guys. Uh, they did a, a couple of shows that were based in that county I lived in. Uh, on the show, I could rec- I recognize some of the places they were at. Uh, and who are the fill, fill us in a little bit? Who are the mountain monster guys? The mountain monster guys on TV. That's those hillbillies from West Virginia. The big old boys. Okay. Uh, it's funny. It's it's. There's not much reality to it. You know, they chase the Mothman and the, they try and set traps. And I'm sure you guys have talked about it uh, at one time or another. I remember. But uh, they had a couple of shows. They were actually in that county, Perry County, Ohio, uh, which it's a it's a coal and gas company county. Uh, it's all hills, timber, national forest. A uh, big part of the county is, or yeah, the county is uh, Wayne National Forest. And uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm, we we're familiar with that. Yeah, and uh, I don't think they've had much success, right? Oh, those guys! Like no, they, <laughs> no uh, I I watched it a couple of times over the years, and it, it, one because I the 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 county I was in. Uh, was named in the advertisements, but uh, yeah, it, and I, uh, you know what? I don't begrudge them. I don't begrudge them for it. I just, I, I don't think it's uh, an easy task to go out and get one of these things. Yeah, uh, you're not going to go out and catch one. Uh, I do believe that there are teams that do go out and hunt them down when they deem it necessary. Uh, I, I'm kind of of the, the group that pretty much if they wanted you dead, you'd be dead. If you run into them, Will, he was at what, 15 feet. And mine was in the, I, we'd have never seen it coming. Uh, it could have took out all four of us and nobody to found us for a while because no, no human being should have been where we were. Nobody would have looked for us there. Uh, but I do believe that uh, they're more than capable. Um, oh yeah, and I've run into I've run into a lot of weird things. Uh, I was in a tree stand one morning and had two trees fall down within about a half hour, forty five minutes of each other, just within a hundred, hundred fifty yards of me in the woods. Never yeah. heard a sound That's... other than the trees. No growls, no nothing. Uh, and no wind, no wind. It was one of those beautiful, so uh, crisp and clear, not a sound, uh, that odd. Well, I'm, and I know I'm within a couple of miles of, a, an area that I know they actively live at least sometime. I could take you to a place over there. There's about an, an area. It's probably between all the roads somewhere between five and 10 square miles that's un, uh, uncut. And uh, you couldn't make me go down in there, period. Not going to happen. I, I hunted and trapped all the way around it, but never never broke foot over the ridge. Uh, every yeah, time he was around. Was, it a, was that a thickly wooded area or? Oh, yeah, it, it's old timber. Uh, well, as old as Ohio's got, uh, you know, roughly around the Civil War, the whole area was deforested pretty much to uh, feed the furnaces for iron. Um, but yeah, it, it was uh, second growth, big trees, big forest. And uh, anytime you were around it, I, like I said, I hunted around it a lot, rode quad around it a lot. And you get it you always had that feeling of being watched and the weird thing uh you know you'd be on the top of the ridge and you'd look over like trying to look down and see if you could see something down the ridge 
many times it wasn't looking down, it was looking out into the trees, uh, like something was in the trees looking at you. Uh, it was, it's hard to explain, but that mm-hmm. same area, there's a dead end road that I used to, I hunted the one side for turkeys, uh, and every spring and, uh, you'd drive uh, two or three miles back is, and the road would dead end and the, be the west side of the road. Never heard a turkey. Never, I never went. That's the area I wouldn't go. Uh, the other side, I killed quite a few birds over there over the years. But three times in a week and a half, three trips, I had trees across the road after I went in. On my way out, I've got trees laying across the road. The first time, it was pretty much just the top. And there's always in a narrow spot of the road where you had almost no shoulder and going down the side of the hill. And the other side was an embankment. Uh, the first one I could just drive over the small, smaller limbs with my Explorer and no problem. The next time it was about eight inches in diameter and uh, I had to get out and cut it out with my chainsaw. I always carried a little, when you live down there, you learn that the wind, you can be driving along and the trees will be laying across the road out in the country. So I always carried a little pulling chainsaw. And the third time, which is, this has all happened within about seven days. Uh, it was about a 12 inch and it was pushed up. The root ball uh, was standing. And uh, actually when I finished cutting it up so I could get clear of the road, uh, the, the root ball actually stood back up. Uh, I'd cut all the end weight off of it. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Say, just, I just quit going back there that year. I, I didn't, I didn't hunt back there at all. Uh, not too far how from there. Ago? Let me, uh, let me back this, up. So how long ago were happened, these? That was, uh, 2010. The, the two trees falling would have been 2000. Seven. No, um, yeah, 2007, that fall. Um, now, 2011, there was a lot going on. I was, I was spending a lot of time out in that area. Uh, and a group of us would ride four wheelers on trails and stuff in, that, in the same general vicinity. And uh, I went out towards the end of turkey season and uh, cleared trails and machete and chainsaw so we could go we would take the women and coolers and just go ride all day and uh, a couple of days later we come back down the trail and there's a i want to say it was a box elder but a tree anyway broke off about eight feet above the ground and kind of twisted but it, the way it was brought down into the trail and wedged into the trees on the other side of the trail. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it was, it wasn't there. Like I said, a couple of days before, uh, I had a machete and got it chopped loose and ended up we three grown men. We couldn't move it, get it out of that way. It was wedged in, had to, uh, throw a rope and, uh, pull it out with one of the machines. Uh, that was odd because there were no storms or anything at the time and nothing else was damaged. Uh, oh. Did you get a chance to look around the area to see if there's any footprints or any other, you know, any other at type the time, of evidence around there? At the time, this wasn't even a, a thought in my head. This is stuff uh, I actually just really didn't think about things until just a few years ago. And actually, Will was one of the first ones I heard and started listening to uh, when I had, I, I found YouTube. And uh, like I said, uh, I only sent a couple emails in my life. Up until about a year ago, I still had a flip phone. Uh, I'm not too technical, but um, I never gave it a thought to look at, look for anything. 
Um, but I did one that really always bugged me ever since. And now I know, but I still can't tell you I saw a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch. But uh, I was a few, a couple of miles as a crow flies from there. The next spring would have been the spring of 11 or yeah, 11. And uh, I was on a side hill working around the hollow and uh, the canopy wasn't completely closed yet. So you got beams of light coming down. It's beautiful around noon. And uh, I was just looking at the ground hunting mushrooms. Uh, still had my shotgun from turkey hunting that morning on my sh- shoulder. And uh, I come and I decided I was going to go up this little finger hollow and uh, hunt all the way around to the next one. And then I was going to head home. Uh, when I turned, I had seen a, a tree that I wanted to, uh, around here, when an elm dies, it tends to, uh, the mushrooms tend to grow around it, the morels. Uh, so, I, I, well, I want to look at that when I get back around. And there was a eight, well, nine to 11 foot snag. Uh, looked like white oak where the top had busted out, maybe lightning or something. I just glanced at it and said, okay, when I get there, I need to go up the hill a little ways. But just a quick reference point. Well, half hour, 45 minutes later, I'm coming back around and I get to that area and I'm looking and there's the elm tree, but there's no snag. Whatever it was, wasn't there anymore. And we're talking a uh, uh, stump. I'm saying stump. I'm, I'm sure it wasn't now, but uh, it was three feet around or better. Uh, <laughs> but it wasn't there when I got back around. Stump, trees don't move. <laughs> uh, all I can figure is that it was just standing there making, thinking I didn't see it. Uh, Oh, okay. So this was actually, that, all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's no, the only explanation that. I have. Uh, yeah. Because when color yeah, was I came back, it, uh, just a grayish brown, you know, it, it, with the way the light was and stuff, it looked like a tree and I wasn't okay. paying much attention. Uh, I just glanced up usually there's a reference when I get to that snag, I, I need to go up the hill a little bit. And, uh, right. when I got there, that snag was gone. And I even then didn't think, uh, okay, maybe I just look, wasn't paying attention or something. You know, you second guess yourself. I never thought to look for tracks or anything like that. Now, uh, I do know a buddy that found tracks along the creek bottom, uh, oh, a mile or two from that, that spot. But, uh, I never found any tracks, uh, that I could say was not belonging there. Uh, that no, is I probably just find the- it interesting. Your your description of seeing something that you think is a tree, you didn't pay any attention to it, and then it's gone. Yeah, and you're right. That, trees don't move. I second guessed myself that that night quite a bit. Uh, I even went back a couple of days later. And uh, looked, and I went to the point where I was standing, thinking maybe I was looking past something. Or, but no, it wasn't there. Whatever I looked at was gone. And there again, there wasn't any noise. Uh, it just wasn't there. I think it realized that I wasn't paying attention. Right. If it just sat, stood still. I'd walk right past it, and I did. It was, uh, well, I was 50 or 60 yards, maybe. Uh, I wasn't right on top of it. And like like I said, I can see it in my head, and it, I swear it was a white oak stump snag. Uh, it, it was just crazy. Yeah. You know, I... I um... Will and I were talking about something kind of along along the lines of this, and that is, um, 
Uh, Will, I think you, you're telling me about a documentary you saw how a moose, or I think it was a moose or an elk, would stand perfectly still, and they absolutely blend into their environment as long as they don't move. Yeah, it was moose in Alaska, and they, not a super thickly vegetated area either. Uh, you'd be able to spot an animal that big pretty easily, but... The guy who was doing the filming, he said, you know, that's one of their great defenses they're so good at. They just stop moving, and they're virtually invisible. Absolutely. Uh, we have the same thing with the white-tailed deer. Uh, a lot of the times, you'd be watching them move, and if they stop and you're not paying attention, or if you look away and look back and they've stopped, you can't find them. Uh, and that just standing in the woods. Uh, yeah, it, Mother Nature has its ways of doing things uh, for their defenses. Well, and I honestly think that not only humans, us, but most animals are are keyed on in on movement. You know, even you know, you think about cats; uh, they they respond, they react to movement. We react to movement. So if something stands perfectly still. Uh, unless you're looking right at it, you may, you know, you're going to miss it. Oh yeah. And sometimes you can be looking right at it. Um, well, we were talking about, uh, my stuff here at home here in the flatlands. Uh, something I wanted to mention is that prowler and trespass reports, uh, you can get on the county's websites and find you know, sheriff's reports pretty easy nowadays and uh prowler and then through this area of ohio the glaciated flat part uh prowler reports and trespassing uh reports go up animal issues you know animals coming up missing they're not we don't have as many as there used to be you know now there's people with their little uh what do they call it uh homesteaders they build a house and get some chickens and whatnot uh but they're having they have issues and the reports seem to go up about the time corn reaches uh its mature size uh through this part of the country and there's only one good reason for that as far as i'm concerned after everything i've been looking and what i've seen and what I've dealt with myself. Uh, Let me ask you this: in, in the part of Ohio, um, what what section of Ohio are you in? Uh, West Central. Uh, you must not have got my email okay. about uh, having Google Earth ready. I could have took you right to the spot. Uh. <laughs> no, I, I did. <laughs> I, I've got it, and that's why I was asking. Uh, the the reason I'm asking is where do you think these creatures possibly are coming from when they come into uh -huh. your area? Well, uh, there is not a lot. You, you got to go 50 or 75 miles uh, east, south, some. You'll get into the hills and timber. Uh, west is uh, basically the same terrain as we've got here. Uh, into Indiana, it's pretty much flat for my 70 north, uh, which is about the north half of the state. Um, like I said, honestly, I think, I don't believe they really migrate. Uh, I, 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 just my opinion, I, I do believe they're nomadic. Uh, they, they move to where the food is when they need to within a home area. Um, uh, but I, I, for some reason, I guess it's my background with the biology and management, um, everything disperses and it would, it just makes sense that, uh, that would be a great time for the males to cover ground and, uh, try to connect with other groups. Like I said, shoot, they could go clear to. You know, southern Illinois, uh, 
up into the Wisconsin, Minnesota. All of that was glaciated between here and there. It's all flat farmland for the most part. And there's yeah. plenty of waterways. They could cover well, the waterways. The I ask, if I take a look at kind of the southeast section of Ohio, and if I'm going to go up mm-hmm. to, for example, Lancaster, a little bit south, mm-hmm. and then heading down southwest or to the northeast, just looking at Google Earth, you've got a large swath of green. So it looks like you have a lot of forested areas up in there, or I should say yeah. down yeah. there. That's where I was living with the the second stuff I was telling you about in Perry County. If you go to Lancaster and go almost due east, uh, you'll come pretty close. You'll be in the northern part of Perry County, uh, right before you get to the Muskingum River. Yeah, it looks like there's, I, I guess there's just a, a tremendous opportunity for these creatures to have a substantial population. Uh, especially uh, Wayne if you, National, again, if you continue, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Wayne National Forest itself, I don't know how many hundred thousand acres that is. Uh, and then you've got the state, <clears throat> excuse me, the state forest, which are again thousands and thousands of acres uh, that run clear from the point up at West or uh, Pennsylvania. The whole eastern half of the state is uh, broken timber and uh, rolling hills. And when you go from I-70 south, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it's all timber land. Um, a lot of it is Mead Paper Company. They have a big mill in Chillicothe, Ohio, which is kind of in the south central part of the state. They own, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of acres. Uh, it, it's prime habitat. Uh, it's all hardwood. There's some broken pines that the state has put in over the years. Uh, white pine, red pine. Uh, they put a lot of those on coal reclaims uh, where they've been mined. Uh, that it's, was it's that's one of the areas. questions I had. It's, sure. So it sounds like it's mm-hmm. predominantly deciduous with some uh, of the conifers, the pines in there. Yeah. Oak hickory, um, a lot of maple, but it was originally oak hickory forest. Well, and we have uh, people that we've talked to. We have one gal we've spoken with up in, actually a couple of them up in, uh, uh, of all places, upstate New York and Massachusetts who talk about these things, uh, they seem to make meals out of, uh, you know, the, the acorns. And actually, a gentleman we just spoke with the other day from, he lives in Tennessee, but he had an encounter in Ohio. Uh, mm-hmm. These things are eating his, uh, apparently, uh, his walnuts. And you know how the walnuts have that green, spongy mm-hmm. material around yep. them. And they're yep. just... Yeah, the husk. Yeah, exactly. And they would throw that up, and he found piles of husks on his property. And uh, I don't think yeah. bears oh, do uh, that. <laughs> no, uh, not that I know. Bears do eat acorns. Uh, I know that. Uh, but Ohio uh, actually was in, uh, oh, it was around that time, around 2011, 12, that the state finally recognized that we have a breeding population of black bears again in the state of Ohio. And they're all over there on the east, southeast part of the state. Uh, there had been a bear killed uh, in the early 2000s, just a couple hundred yards from uh, where I had shot a deer uh, about a month and a half earlier. Um, and we knew, my buddies and I over there knew that that bear had been there for a year or so. But he had never bothered anybody. He didn't raid trash cans or anything. You'd see tracks, and we found scat a couple of different times. He was living in an old mine shaft. Uh, and during a deer drive, some woman, she claimed it was she was protecting herself, but she shot it broadside at 50 yards running up the hill. All it was trying to do was get away from people. 
uh, and she killed it. But there, there have been more come in, and now there's a breeding. I think they said there's roughly 14 or 15 breeding sows in the state now, uh, which is great. I like hearing it. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's fantastic. I'm all for um, conservation. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I'll be honest with you, uh, the black, I just saw one about a month ago. Uh, zipping across the road <laughs> and they're just you know they're they're really a nice animal they're they're very clean and uh had a very silky black coat but the the other interest that i have with the black bears coming in and repopulating that southeast portion of ohio is i would imagine it's true there but it's true here in the pacific northwest and that is these creatures do eat bear that would not surprise me. I think they could eat anything they set their mind to uh, here in the States. Um, you can't, if, if what I saw that snag was what I saw, uh, I can't even begin to imagine. Because in, in my head, if it was standing broadside to me, this thing was three feet across the chest, through the chest, deep. I can't imagine yeah. how wide it actually was across the shoulders. Uh, and there's nothing, nothing in the United States that could hand, could deal with it. I can't even imagine the strength, whatever was doing that stomping when we were kids and ran into that, uh, that force to do that at 40 or 50 yards to feel it in your chest when that hit the ground and uh, like i said you can almost feel it more than you could hear it uh yeah that is that is an immense amount of power yeah it really is and and i i only have heard that once but i could equate it to somebody taking a uh an engine block from a, a large block engine dropping it on the ground from about 60 feet is what it felt like yeah, I, uh, just I would not fun. argue that a bit. Um, I can't even imagine. I weighed over 500 pounds at one time. Truck driving wasn't very good to me. Uh, but if if a guy tried to stomp, uh, just stomping on the ground as hard as you can would jar your knees and ankles so bad it hurts. <laughs> uh, to be able to do with that force, their bone density and joints must, uh, t- lend, uh, excuse me, tendons and ligaments must be outrageous. Um, yeah, I uh, know, like I, I said, if, if they were, if they wanted to be killing machines, they could be. Uh, a human being would have no chance. I don't care what you're carrying. Uh, but uh, like anything, yeah. if it bleeds, it can die. But uh, I would not want to take their, the risk. I've, I've killed a lot of deer that were shot right in the heart and still went 100 yards. Uh, I don't care what. Uh, you could shoot him full of lead and he could still tear you apart before he died, you know? Uh, that's it. Right. I've always carried a weapon when I'm in the woods. I just always have. And the, Never for these things. Uh, They don't really scare me for the most part uh, an intimidation level, but uh, I don't think you could carry a big enough gun that would be convenient to carry. And if they wanted you, I think they'd have you. Uh, I carry a gun for the other two-legged animal. Uh, They scare me and worry me a heck of a lot more than these creatures do yeah absolutely some of them are no, this is evil. pretty interesting <clears throat> yeah oh yeah of course absolutely um so this the area that you're living in now you have you ha- heard anything in in the current area where you're um where you're just, at or uh, is it still kind of a conservative i was telling you about uh the two I was telling you about are about 20 minutes, 20 or 30 miles from here. 
uh, uh-huh. just east of us in uh, Miami County. If you want to punch that into your computer, that'll give you an idea. Sure. Uh, that's right about where the glaciers stop. You'll start to notice the trees and uh, the hills. It starts to get rolly. Excuse me. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, stay in touch, and uh, I really appreciate uh, you contacting us. And if you hear anything else, uh, you know how to how to reach out to us. And um, absolutely, uh, very fascinating. I didn't think I'd ever tell anybody any of this. You know, the the one I was 16 years old, and I'm 52 now. Uh, and never talked about it really with anyone. Uh, but listening to you guys and some other people too, uh, I just don't. I don't think the eastern part of this country gets the uh, attention that it should. And you know, like Ohio, everybody knows about Salt Fork. Uh, I can promise you they're there. Uh, but there's a lot more activity all over the state it's just that the people don't talk about it the you got to understand appalachian people are different they're a lot like natives uh they'll talk amongst themselves but they're not going to talk to outsiders much uh i had friends over there i've lived i lived and worked with and was around for 20 years been to weddings funerals graduations uh and I'm still an outsider. Well, Doug, listen, we yeah. certainly appreciate you talking to us. I, I appreciate you getting back with me. Uh, it's good talking to you. I've listened to Will for several years. I, I wish you guys would go back to the uh, the old split screen where we could see your smiling faces. We're, uh, <laughs> we're talking about doing some of those. Yeah. Uh, let people know who they're who they're listening to. <laughs> but, uh, right. I appreciate you listening to me, and uh, I hope the fires settle down out there. That's a beautiful country. Yeah. Uh, I've been out too. there in a long time, but I always loved it. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open now.